in the movies, you'll see a lot of emotionally distraught people going down to the pub and having a beer or having some hard liquor after they've had a hard day. Now that is very important not to do. This is what you do never, ever want to do. And this is why it's in all the movies, because humans mimic, copy and emulate what they see on the screen. The human mind is proven not to know the difference between real time, imagined thought, and what's on the screen. And the people in Hollywood know that human psychology is very simple. It's more about monkey see, monkey do. And that's why they'll always put this up in the movies. Always going to show the person having a hard time, having a hard day, and then going down to the pub, having a cigarette outside their place of work, complaining, eating junk food, eating ice cream, and they'll also frame it with comedy. Now, I think it's raining again. I gotta put, no surprise, put the umbrella up. So, even though frame the, the frame this cycle with comedy, they'll always frame it with comedy because in the subconscious mind, comedy is very safe. The subconscious is in charge of our safety. It's always looking for the safe spot. Basically in the tribal environment, there's really nothing safer than laughing. <laughs> no one ever dies or gets killed if the tribe is laughing. So they'll frame it, they'll frame it with laughing to make it go deeper into your behavioral system. So you adopt it more. So you're drawn to it more. And there's a reason they do that because they don't want you coming into contact with your pain because pain matures you. Pain brings you from the child state, the dependent state, the woe is me victim state, and matures you into the adult dependent empowered state. If you sit in your pain, let's imagine this person is going down to the pub because they had a hard day at the slave at the slave factory where they work. Now, if you go and drink that pain away, you're removing the motivation for you to actually quit that shitty job and not like in some immature rage where you walk in, don't have a plan B and tell the boss to go F themselves and then you're out of a job, you still have to pay rent and feed yourself and you got no job. That's stupid. But if you avoid the pain, you don't come across this intelligence, this innate intelligence in your body where you get to a point where you say, enough's enough. And when you say enough's enough and you're not sedated and you can't be tranquilized, sedated, drunk, high, you can't to get to that point because when you're sedated, it means you don't feel your pain. So how are you ever supposed to get to the point where enough's enough? And they don't want you at that point because when you say enough's enough, it's like going to the gym on the first day and you might lift 10 pounds and you're like, the next day you're sore. But then you get stronger. This is what they don't want. This is the cycle they want you to avoid is starting something because you said enough's enough because you were brave enough to sit in your pain and hear the message and you get into this cycle of where you get stronger. You know, next day you lift 15 pounds, 20 pounds, 25 pounds. And you could be going back to that job that you suck, that sucks. And it's important if you do. I worked at a job I didn't like too, but I didn't go in with my head down, wrecking the organization and ruining my reputation. That's even more dumb. I would go to the job I didn't like, knowing I had a way out, knowing I had a dream and knowing that accomplishing that dream 
involved the job I didn't like. I needed the money from the job I didn't like to pursue my goal. And when you have that attitude, you walk in and everything's a little brighter and you know this isn't a life sentence. And if you want to make that shitty job a life sentence, keep having the sedating coffee. Keep having the wine at night. Keep numbing your brain watching the tube. Keep having the junk food. Keep ordering in the takeout food that a maggot would vomit if, it, if the maggot ate it. Keep doing that. Keep sedating. Keep uh, distracting. Keep tranquilizing yourself. You'll never get there. As Alan Watts says, it'll become all wretch and no vomit. It'll never get there. Because for you to accomplish your goals, you have to feel your pain. And this is why everything that your handlers, your social engineers, your architects of doom, everything they do, every single thing they do will make sure you never come into contact with your pain, ever. They want you to have a safe space. If someone offends another person, they're like, you offended them. They don't want anybody offended because that's painful. And painfulness, as you face it, could be your ticket to a better life. And they don't want that. They don't want you maturing. They don't want you individuating. They don't want any of that. They want to rule a group of infantilized, dependent babies. And that's what they have right now because this avoid your pain cycle has been woven into the fabric of our dysfunctional society and it's been glorified and promoted and celebrated the wine mom coffee this coffee that it's all part of a psychological operation to keep you chemically numb so you keep doing shit that you don't like doing and it starts in school where all the school children are taught to keep doing stuff they don't like doing and then that becomes your life that becomes your real life where you're sad in that quagmire of shit so long that you think that that's normal that doing shit you don't like to do you 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 commit to it and then you also commit to the addictions to the sedative substances that make that shitty life a reality now if you need more empowering yet depressing information like this Get on my private email list. I'll make your life better. I might make you cry to start. Email me at info at This is Jason Christoph signing off. Thanks for listening.